Well, a very good morning and welcome to Chianti Manzisk. It's a nice snowy day for the last day of the biathlon season and the top 30 women in the world lined up ready to go in this mass start event. There in your picture is the world number one, Tora Berger, who has been absolutely outstanding this year. She's uh, got 11 victories already, 19 podiums. She's going for the out-and-out -out record today of 20 podium finishes in one season. And when you bear in mind, we've only had 25 five races so far it's quite astonishing what she's achieved but Mike she's got some really stiff opposition and perhaps none more so than the lady on her left well it, it's not going to be easy for Tora Berger possibly uh, a podium I felt yesterday and the previous day she's just lacking ever so slightly and quite rightly at the end of the season after such an input mentally and physically OK, well, if Tora Berger's not going to win it, who is? Who's, who's going to come through? If you look at the faster skiers, we know about Kuzmina and Makarainen. Who else can challenge? Well, do you know, I was thinking the fresh mind, the fresh legs and the youth of uh, Dalmeyer today. I feel very good that the, the, the young and the talented Dalmeyer, she's got no pressure. She's in this pack of amazing, the best 30 in the world, and there's no real pressure. And I think that's going to set Dalmeyer up well. That suggests to me that you've been on bet 365 and placed a little bet. What are the odds on Dalmeyer? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, but, but also there's... Um, and I think for, for uh, via Shemarenko, she has been shooting well lately, but often we see her uh, at the end of the season coming quite good. So I think uh, via Shemarenko, possibly. Yeah, the Ukrainians will be full of high hopes. They've they've done well. Vita Shemarenko so close yesterday to getting her first ever win, but three misses on the last shoot, just showing that she may have it physically now. She hasn't quite got it together mentally, and that was a bitter disappointment. It'll be interesting to see how Vita comes back from that. Number 10, leading the way, Olga Zaitseva, sixth uh, place in the World Cup standings last year, ranked number 10, and in fact, their bib numbers pretty much correspond to their World Cup positions at the moment with one race remaining. As they used to do, Mike, the two worst results, in fact, it used to be three, the three worst results were taken away. This year, it's just the two worst results. But even with that, no one can catch Berger. No one can catch Dom Ratchever in second place. Andrea Henkel, though, could be under pressure from uh, Durant, Abert and Kaiser Makarainen. So Henkel, if she wants to finish in the top three, and there she is on the far side, needs to get a good solid result. A top six or seven will be enough to guarantee her third place finish. Pretty good. And leading the way, Zaitseva, obviously, and Vilakina. Vilakina, her ski speed, even from last week in Sochi, has, has really lifted. And I think with uh, Vilakina's fast shooting, high percentages, uh, she really has a chance of taking this title as well today. Well, the Russians would love to get a win. A bad start from Daria Domrasheva. And... Uh She's pretty quick. It'll be interesting to see how she takes this. She lost a lot of ground in those first uh, 15, 20 metres, but uh, I don't think there'll be any panic. And there's no point pushing the pace too hard on the first lap. Miriam Gusner, here she is out front, but how long will that last? Her standing shooting has been her weak point uh, so far this season. Three wins, though. There aren't many who can claim to have done that. Only Berger, of course, and Domrasheva. And who else? Sukalova. Three wins after winning. Uh, she's done the double here so far. She could, of course, finish the season off with a triple win. Yeah, what, a, what a season she's had. Uh, mostly previously uh, uh, coached by her parents and then uh, going into the national team has given her that impetus, that change of scenery. And uh, her confidence has to be high today with uh, the previous two days' wins. Well, uh, over the last uh, week or so, we've been uh, asking for your suggestions as to the best race of the season. Uh, I've been through them all last night uh, and an amazing number coming through saying that yesterday's pursuit was the best one they've seen. It was a fantastic race, but that was the one freshest in the me memory. Other races in, in the running, the Oslo mass start where Berger and Kuzmina went head to head. Kuzmina just being overhauled by Berger on the uh, last leg. And of course, the world championship mass start that Dom Rashova came through. And the other one that appeals to me actually was the women's relay at the world championships. And for the reason I like it, first Firstly, Norway coming from 15th through to win the event. Sulem Dahl and Berger, two brilliant final legs, but the Italians also getting on the podium. So that's the one that wins my vote. What about you? I'm going back to the World Championships. We don't often see a, a pack uh, finish or race to the line in the women's field. We do maybe more so in the men's. And I love the pursuit at the World Championships in the women's field. And, and when Flatland uh, fell, and there's uh, another Norwegian falling there, that's uh, Tyrell Ekhoff. Uh, 
tripping up there. But that was a great race. Zeitzeva and Flatland moving into silver medal position. Then they both fell and the race changes. Polka coming through. It was a race of change. That, for me, that was the best of the season. OK, so there you have it. We'll deal with the men's race uh, a little later on. The men's race uh, starting... Uh, 1.30 European time, 18.30 local time, 12.30 if you're watching in the UK. If you're in New York at 07.30 in the morning, and I know we've got a few viewers in Sydney, and I think the men's race starting at 22.30. So uh, now you know, don't miss it. Should be an absolute cracker. The uh, Crystal Globes are decided, and uh, incidentally, the mass start, although uh, Berger hasn't quite won it as yet, uh, she's only got to finish today, Mike, because if she finishes, she picks up 11 points, and that will be the Enough, enough to complete the full set sprint pursuit mass start individual and of course the overall what a fantastic achievement it's outrageous and there's Vilakina she has got that great ski form uh, I think it's Vilakina or is it side save it's Vilakina and um, when you look at what Tora Berger has done in this race Patrick I think this is one of the harder races for the athletes to win because you're starting at the same time as your peers the best 30 in the world and Tora Berger she's won three out of four mass starts this season that's never been achieved before. Yeah, a fantastic effort. And of course, uh, Martin Forcado winning three out of three individual races, which arguably is an even better achievement because uh, there's a little bit of luck involved there. But the mass start, uh, many of the biathletes say, is the hardest one to win. So up the final climb towards the range for the first shoot. Remember, the distance is 12 and a half kilometers, two and a half K loops, five times round to make up that distance. And those at the back at the moment, number 24 is uh, Nadine Horschler, I believe, for Germany. So a good start from uh, Vilikina. She's not really pushing the pace too hard, but she's uh, obviously stretching those behind her. A little Makarina, no surprise to see her up there. Pigdrushna for Ukraine, wearing bib number eight, who's had a great season, the world champion in the sprint discipline. Can she add another World Cup win to her name with uh, a victory here in Chianti Manzis? Look, look what's happening midfield. Tora Berger, she, there's a gap there to the, I can't see which French woman in front of her, but uh, she's running in about 10th position. Is she struggling? If she's feeling good, she's normally up in second, third or fourth place traditionally in the mass starts at this stage. Yeah, she didn't have a particularly good start and neither did Daria Domrashova and Domrashova dropping right back into the middle of the pack as well. So those two uh, either tired, in fact they must all be tired. It's a long season. How many other sports where they do 26 individual races, uh, seven or eight relays throughout the season plus all the selection races and uh, I guess when they go home for the Christmas break they're tempted to enter a few local races as well. And their national championships, you're looking at a, what a total of uh, between 37 and 42 races for the best from May, what mid November to end of March. They deserve a few months off. Fila Kina, we haven't seen her ski this fast. She's normally fifth to tenth fastest, but outstandingly fastest at the moment. Well, and she's pretty quick to get the first few targets down. Four out of four, five <laughs> out of five. She's setting the pace, and Rostovsev will be happy with what he's seen so far. Now, who can match that? Pigdrishna has two down. Miriam Gusner missing one early on, and another. Nothing's changed for her. Andrea Henkel, who's been uh, a picture of consistency so far this season, misses one. Daria Domracheva with... Two out of two, three out of three. Tora Berger clears. Tora Berger looks as though <laughs> she's on a go slow today. There's none of that urgency at the moment. But once she senses that a good result is possible, I think she'll kick into top gear. Domrashova clear, Durant, Makarainen all clear. Uh, I guess at this stage we need to look at the mistakes. Gusner we know about. And Anastasia Kuzmina, Mike, who was definitely a potential winner at the start of the day. Two misses early on, you think? Uh, she can her come. Chance is gone. Often we see her, her making a mistake first time in, and then she disciplines herself. She seems to change her mindset and gets the next 15. Tom Rush of a 15th place, 32 seconds behind, having hit all the targets. So she's uh, there's something not quite right there. Ah, That's... don't tell me she's got more pulp. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Things aren't going her way this week, are they? Um, yeah, that hurts when someone skis over your basket. It rips the strap off your off your hand and can give the, the wrist a nasty twist as well. So uh, don't, no wonder she looks uh, a little bit nonplussed. 
So further down the order, still I suppose, only 30 seconds separating the top 15. And one or two victims early on. Well, the first shoot completed in this, the last race of the season. And what a season it has been. This is the fifth mass start, incidentally. Tora Berger has won three of them, and she's finished in second place in one of them. That was uh, the World Championships, which, uh, of course, Daria Domrashova won. And looking at shooting records, uh, three of the four have been won with 18 out of 20. Berger hit uh, 19 out of 20 in Rupolding on a slightly easier course. So I think uh, from that, we can say that 18 out of 20 is probably going to be the winning score today although if you do go clear you obviously increase your chances the chasing pack Tora Berger just slowly working her way forward in the in the chasing pack Makarayan in 11.5 Makarayan and she loses in in terms of shooting speed throughout this whole season she loses between eight and ten seconds on Tora Berger shooting every time she comes into the range but I guess she'll argue that if uh, if she misses one target, she loses 23. So by uh, making sure, and 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 she must have she must have tried shooting fast, Mike. They all try shooting fast, uh, but you you have an optimum level, and you've got to find the balance yourself. There aren't many people who can shoot as fast as Simonada. There aren't many people who can shoot as accurately as uh, Martin Fulcada and of course Tora Berger. It's a fine balance, isn't it? Well, there's Macarani, and she's got the ski speed, and I think when you've got the ski speed, but she almost goes through some apprehension, some fear when she comes into the range, and therefore she shoots uh, slower. And often shooting is just about the rhythm, but clearly it's a confidence issue and she has to try and settle longer. Okay, so how many clear on the first shot? We definitely have 17 clear. Novakowska, who's come in for Sinaviv Sulemdal, who had the right to start, but uh, we haven't seen her race for a while. She's uh, been under the weather. Just decided that uh, she's not recovered enough, and at this stage of the season, she's uh, dropped right down the World Cup order. I guess it's the sensible move. I think it probably is. Isn't it a, a, an amazing uh, situation? At the end of the season, Vila Kina, you can see the spark. She's she's jumping from ski to ski. She's looked quite flat and tired all winter with 25 races. And on the very last one, she's got this spark today, this dynamic movement in her technique. Well, she's earned herself some... 30 metres or so advantage. Oh. Now, that is a big crash. That could well have been Zaitseva who's gone down. Uh, looks like the Russian colours. It is number 10. Olga Zaitseva crashes down and uh, <laughs> she's OK. She's OK, but what's so amazing is that everyone else avoided it. Watch her. She's third in that group. She, the, the left ski goes over the right ski. Durant a bear, a brilliant little bit of footwork to sidestep the falling Russian and uh, everything back to normal, except for the fact that Zaitseva has lost her position in that group. That would have put the pulse rate up. Certainly, uh, she would have got a little bit of a shock going down so quickly. Purely, Mike, a loss of concentration. It, it certainly